and welcome to What Pet Should I Get? My name is Julia Batchelor. This is our very first program in the brand new year, so happy new year to all of you out there. I hope you had a great holiday season. Today we have a great show. Uh, Claire Forndren will be here, of course, from Dogtails Rescue and Sanctuary. And later on, Carly Whirl is here from Coveted Canines Rescue. And up first, we have the lovely Callie Milliman here from the Ontario SPCA, and she has brought a delightful, sweet little cat named Marmar. Um, but of course, before we talk about Marmar, yes. I just want to ask, how have you been? How have your holidays been? It was great. You know, uh, we had a great holiday season. Of course, I myself uh, had some time off, which was great. But, uh, you know, in terms of the Ontario SPCA, we had a very successful holiday season. Uh, we had our I Adopt for the Holidays campaign, as you know, which yep. wrapped up December 31st. Uh, we saw, I believe, over 260 animals go home from our Stouffville location. Amazing. Which is great. Um, so they've all found forever homes. And of course, we had our pause and give program uh, which was all about giving back which helped raise a ton of money i don't have a final number yet but uh, lots and lots of money which will go to helping all the animals uh, across the province so we had a very successful holiday season well that's perfect and yeah. hopefully 2017 will gear up to be another great year for holiday fundraising um, i know you do have one uh coming up uh, but before we talk about that um winter weather mm -hmm. we touched on this um before the break I wanted to ask you, what are your top three tips for your do's and don'ts for making sure that your pets are safe during this extremely cold weather? You know what, it's one of the things that comes uh, to the top of my mind, especially right now, it is, it started to drop out there. So, you know, before the holidays, it was it was cool, but it wasn't so bad, but now we're getting into that, what they call that polar vortex yeah. kind of weather. And the things that I think about are uh, dressing your pets appropriately is definitely my first thing. You know, we obviously want to get nice, thick winter coats for ourselves and, and winter boots for ourselves, and some breeds of dogs maybe have a thicker coat but mm -hmm. our, our smaller little guys might need a little help with that so making sure that you get them a sweater or a coat that fits them well and is appropriate for the weather um, and of course protecting their paws that's another really big one as it gets icy out there so comes the salt yeah and that can be so harmful to their paws so reminding everybody to make sure they have boots um, or, or some sort of protection yep. for their, their there pets. are salves out there you could rub on if, if, if your dog's not a boot wearing kind of dog that's my dog right yep. so she doesn't like to get the <laughs> The boots put on she walks hilarious she's really uncomfortable it's it's pretty funny but uh, yeah we get it we get the balm for the bottoms of her feet and that helps to protect them a little bit but keep in mind that salt can get sort of lodged in between their pads yeah. so maybe get Stuck a damp yeah get a damp cloth give them a little give them a little wipe before they come in the house uh, just to make sure that they're protected and my other thing is if you're traveling with your pet yeah um, we talk about no hot pets in the summer and we always talk about them being left in a vehicle in the extreme heat but we have to keep in mind how freezing cold our cars get when yeah. it is so cold outside and and that can be detrimental to your pet just in the same way it is with the heat well and one of the things too about leaving a pet outside i mean how fast can uh frostbite set it yeah. because i know we see um, with the rescue organizations that we work with animals cats especially that are coming in that have been out on the streets and uh you see damaged ears yes. uh, damaged tails. tails and i i mean how long does that really take to set in i mean it can it can take no time at all i mean it can if it pet is left outside even for an hour or what have you. I mean, when we think about a cat's delicate little ears, they are quite thin, they yeah. are quite small. It's similar to our own, I mean, slightly different, but um, it can happen pretty quickly. And, and it's obviously extremely painful. Yes. Um, we see it as well at coming into the Ontario SPCA. So if folks are concerned, if they see an animal outside, um, they need to call. So yeah. obviously, if you can tell it's an owned pet, it's maybe your neighbor's pet or, or what have you, and you're concerned, call three. 10 SPCA no area code needed so that's 310 77 22 you will speak to a live dispatcher 24 7 and they will be able to give you a hand obviously they will talk you through the situation they'll try and figure out what's going on um, and, and make a call essentially if we need to send somebody out there yeah you have the authority then if you think an animal is being neglected by leave, being left outside in extreme conditions the Ontario SPCA does have the authority to come in and remove that animal absolutely I mean if, if even we need a little bit more time what mm -hmm. we can do is put the animal in the vehicle with the vehicle on with the heat yeah. going to get the animal out of those extreme conditions while we try and locate an owner. I mean, it, it, we have to do what we can. Um, and our animal control officers and our agents are out on the road this very second as we're sitting here speaking. So, you know, give us a call. We will do everything we can to dispatch somebody to that location to get that animal immediate help. Okay, so 
something to keep in mind if you see an animal you think is in distress due to the weather, make sure you call 310. SPCA. SPCA. Now, moving on to um, a brighter um, topic. Yes. Uh, coming up in February, you have your um, a fundraising campaign. We do. So talk to us about your National Cupcake campaign. Yes. So National Cupcake Day, it uh, happens in February, as you mentioned. This year, the day itself falls on Monday, February 27th. National Cupcake Day is very unique. Um, it actually started in Australia, and they found it was very successful for their SPCAs and Humane Societies, and we, quote-unquote, adopted it here in Canada. And it's mostly based between Ontario and British Columbia. However, there are various provinces that do participate. There are over 100 SPCAs and Humane Societies that are taking part in the campaign. So it's the largest and only fundraising campaign of its kind in Canada that actually brings our animal welfare organizations together. You know, we're unlike the United States with the ASPCA. That's one body that oversees the entire country. We are province by province. So this is the one thing that brings us all together. So essentially what happens then? So people come to your, their local um, SPCA location and they buy cupcakes that you provide, that you have on hand? They can, yeah. So that's one way. So an SPCA or Humane Society can have a cupcake day party themselves and do essentially that. But what we're actually doing is we're sort of calling out to everybody in our communities and asking them to be bake their own cupcakes and sell them and all the money goes to the Ontario SPCA. That's you got it. And you who got doesn't it. love cupcakes? It's so funny because originally I thought to myself, why cupcakes? But turns out people love puppies, kittens, and cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes. It's so a trifecta it's, of cuteness. <laughs> it's a tri exactly. Speaking of cuteness, because we're running out of time, I want to talk about Marmar. Great. So tell us all about this little guy. Marmar is a 10-year-old, as you can see, adorable, super sweet guy. Gorgeous. He's up for adoption at our center right now, Aww. and he's looking for his home. You know, it's great to have a cat like Marmar because, of course, he's going to be litter box trained. Yep. And he's also super cool. Like, he's so chilled out, and I think if you're looking for a pet that's going to do this with you, yeah. hang out on the couch and cuddle. Honestly, if I had a good camera right now, I'd take a portrait of the two of you together because <laughs> it looks like something I'd turn into an oil painting. He is honestly so fantastic. So if you're interested, come adopt this guy. And he is considered an orange. And for people yes. who are familiar with the Ontario SPCA, you do have three types of personalities. Orange meaning he's he's can be with an active house, but he's also with a, like a more mellow cat. Yeah, he right? is a little bit more mellow, I would say, in the middle orange uh, sort of spectrum, but maybe even a little more towards the purple, more chilled out uh, kind of thing. But uh, he'll play. He likes to play with toys and all that good stuff too. But as you can see he would prefer to curl up and just snuggle all day long. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so if you're interested in perhaps adopting Marmar, you're looking for an older cat that's no fuss, no muss, and he's gorgeous and has a great personality, please ensure that you visit the Ontario SPCA. You can check out our website for details. And don't forget, National Cupcake Day is happening in February. Bake some cupcakes, raise some money, and help out the Ontario SPCA. We'll see you after the break. And welcome back. Joining me now is Carly Whirl from Coveted Canines Rescue. Welcome back to the show. I haven't seen you since November. Thank you. So I know that there are a few new things on the horizon for Coveted Canines. Um, talk to us about this new program that you've initiated, initiated within your rescue program. We have um, an educational program that we're launching. It's called Coveted Canines Kids. And what it is, is it's an education program. We infuse art. We teach children about pet care, um, how to walk a dog on a leash, how to pick up poo, how to feed them, how to brush them, that kind of thing. We're also going to introduce things like rabbit care, guinea pig care, fish care, um, parrot care, and you know different types of birds, that kind of thing. We have professionals yep. coming in to help with um, teaching these different types of lessons to the children. Nice. We're also um, working with the kids to pick dogs from different kill shelters and rescues that they can do fundraising strategies for in order to save and bring to Canada or help within Canada, because we work with a lot of Canadian dogs as well. Yeah. And uh, we actually launched it um, in December and they made cookies and they tie-dyed bandanas and we sold all of these things at um, it was the National or the Christmas Pet Expo. Cool. And they raised $330. Oh, that's wonderful. And they were able to save a dog with that money. So um, the doggie's coming on December, or sorry, on January the 15th. And where's this dog coming from? Mexico. So we may have an opportunity yes, to meet this dog. I'm hoping. Okay. She's pretty amazing. So she may get adopted by her foster. I don't know. Oh, and uh, we call but those when foster, foster fails. fails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, uh, that's excellent, you know, and I imagine a lot of parents out there are probably excited about a program where if a child learns the responsibility and the care that goes into taking care of an animal that, you know, when they, they pester their parents, I promise, I promise, I promise, I'll take care of it, that if they have the skill set, it's more than likely to happen. It's true, and it's it, you have to also know how to take care of an animal in terms of how to pet it, how to approach yes. it, yeah. not to squeeze it too hard, not to pull the mm. tail, the ears, that kind of thing. Yeah, when to know when an animal, a cat or dog or whatever, needs its own space. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, and then we're doing all these amazing art programs, we're learning about different different masters in art that loved animals, that, you know, endorsed helping animals yep. and um, also worked with animals in their art, creating all sorts of different programs that are really interesting, you know, and, and then it's teaching children about global awareness, yeah. ways of supporting, you know, animal rescue in different countries oh. in Canada, ways they can do it, giving them a voice, giving them an opportunity, a tool to become effective humans for the greater good of the, of the world. And, you know, young effective humans become amazing effective adults, adults that exactly. are going to do wonderful things yes. on a global scale. Yes. Now, speaking of supporting animal rescue, uh, Coveted Canines was uh, blessed with a grand donation from uh, the company Mars. Mars Canada. Yeah. They have an amazing um, pet division, and they're they're all about the greater the greater good of of animals, especially rescue animals, cats and dogs, that kind of thing. Yeah. They donated 350 packs of chews for our foster dogs, dentist dentist dent sticks, and even um, these things called greenies for yep. like teeth to keep yeah to teeth keep your teeth clean, clean. Yep. um pill pockets which oh i know those really i have a cat that yeah yeah so we need pill pockets yeah um it was amazing so we have a whole bunch of photos on our um social media that show a whole bunch of children moving the boxes into a house oh, those were kids that are part of coveted canines kids oh, that's so they great. came and it took us like three and a half hours to move, to move all of those boxes. But that's a good. That's a good three and a half hours. I spy. know. And thank you, Mars Canada. I know. Amazing. Now I imagine too, as a um, a, chari a charitable not for profit organization, we always talk about the needs for funds, needs for donations. Um, what's on the agenda right now? What are you guys looking for? We are always looking for foster parents. Foster parents. Foster parents are essential. We cannot bring dogs into our rescue without a place for them to, to stay and be nurtured and cared for. Yes. Um, and then, of course, we always need um, funds for vetting. We do so much vetting for our animals before we adopt them out. Yes. Uh, we have a website where there's donation information. You can also call one of the vets we work with, make a donation specifically for a dog mm -hmm. there. Um, we had an amazing uh, contributor who paid for most of a dog that we have, Evie, her surgery. She had to have her leg amputated. Aww. She was tied to a train station bench in Canada and left to freeze oh, with wow. a broken leg that couldn't <sighs> be fixed and had to be amputated. A four-month-old lab shepherd puppy. She's on our website. Yeah. Is she ready for adoption? She's or ready. She's foster? She had her stitches removed um, three days ago, and she's good to go. Her hair's just growing back now. Well, anybody who so. knows, who's a pet owner knows how expensive veterinary bills are oh, yes so if you are looking to support coveted canines you know and you you have some extra money left over from Christmas because lots of people do you may want to donate to that website and or to that organization and their website is of course on our website now speaking of dogs that have um, traveled yes um, we have sky sky so tell us about this little, this sweet little dog. Oh, she's so oh, look sweet. At her. She she's so kisses. sweet. She is a Yorkie Schnauzer Chihuahua. Yeah. And she's about two years old. Um, fully vetted. Everything's been done. Uh, very healthy little girl. She doesn't like to be left alone for too long. So, you know, we're looking for someone who, you know, either can get a dog walker or works from home or yep. can take her to work. Okay. She's not usually this wiggly. No, it's the uh, setting, Her right? beautiful foster mom is in the, in the uh, audience. And she's probably trying to get to her. Well, I can attest to for meeting your um, offset. She's a very, very sweet dog. She's very sweet. Yeah. So now she's from Mexico. Yes. And when did she come in? She came in on December 22nd. She's yep. from the Cozumel Humane Society. Okay. Um, and she, she is just such a sweet cuddler. She loves to nuzzle at night um, with her people. She's also crate trained. She's almost potty trained. Um, she's just, she's just so wonderful. And honestly. good with other dogs. She's great with other dogs. Amazing with children. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not sure about cats. Okay. I think she was cat tested, but I'm. She was cat tested at the vet. There's a there's a vet cat. I had that go. It was great. Yeah. But we would have to do like a more extensive. I find with little dogs, I'm more concerned with um, the cat. The, the yeah, the yeah. dog's well being <laughs> than the cat's well being because cats can be a little bit more you know claws and teeth exactly. when it comes to uh, strange animals exactly. in their environment. Yeah. Um, but that's great. So she's all ready to go. Yes, she and is. And I know you're going to have some more dogs because you said right now, which is a really good position yes. to be for an animal rescue, you're actually short on dogs, but you're going to get an in dog. Yes, we are getting our first group of dogs on the 16th of January. And where are they coming from? Those ones are coming from Mexico. Okay. Then we have more coming in on the 24th from Arkansas, oh, from um, Texas. Yep. And we're actually taking in a whole bunch of owner surrenders. Um, hopefully Local. a Cocker Spaniel, yes, a Wheaton Terrier. Carrier. We have a whole bunch of dogs that we're sort of um, getting assessed right now. Okay. We send our trainers in to assess the Canadians. Yep. Because um, all of our dogs abroad are assessed by trainers abroad, but the Canadians, we send in our, our Canadian people to, to just check them out, make sure that they're okay with kids. Okay, so when we do get all these dogs kind of uh, coming in, they're all going to be going to fosters, I'm, I'm yes. sure, including your home. Yes. Um, will you be having an adoption event so where people may can meet them in person easily? Yes. The end of January, we have two adoption events one at Pet Value Laird and one in the beaches. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so if you're interested in uh, in adopting Sky, or if you want to meet some of the dogs that will be coming, please visit our website for more details. You can find out all about um, Coveted Canines Rescue there, and we will see you on the other side of the break. Welcome back. Joining me now is Claire Forndred from Dog Tales Rescue and Sanctuary, and she has brought a very, very special dog who has traveled a very, very long way to be here. This is Benny, who's come all the way from China. Yes. But, now, Benny has quite the backstory, but before we talk about Benny, I just wanted to, to um, touch base with you. Um, before um, the break, um, Dog Tales was having a Christmas market fundraiser because mm. everybody always needs money. Um, how did that go? <laughs> It went really well. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of the families that came to our Christmas market were families that had previously adopted dogs. So there were a lot of reunions uh, oh, nice. the week before Christmas, which was really nice. And uh, raised, yeah. raised some money. We raised That's some money. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I I went myself and I bought some cards and. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, Dogtails has a couple things um, still on the go uh, that are fundraising campaigns. One of them, we do have a picture. It is um, your Adopt a, Do a Room campaign. Talk to us about that again. Yeah. Just remind our viewers about that. So basically, uh, the Adopt a Room program was set up so that families uh, could help support the dogs that are in our care by symbolically adopting one of the rooms in our shelter. And as you can see, the rooms are pretty sweet. <laughs> yes. So basically the way that the program works is you adopt the room for a full calendar year yep. and we'll put a plaque in the room with whatever engraving you'd like. So some people are adopting rooms in memory of a pet that's passed away. Others are adopting a room as a gift for an animal lover. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's really kind of... Uh, the perfect thing to do if you're looking for a way to really... To honor somebody yeah. or a, a past pet, right? Exactly. And I know the other thing you have, I mean, it's still, we're still in January here. Um, Dog Tales, you guys put together a beautiful uh, year calendar with some yes. lovely pictures of dogs that uh, reside currently or some have gone now to Forever Homes. There it is right there. And this is still available? It is, yeah. So um, our planners are available on our website. You can order one online or you can come into the rescue and pick one up in person and I say go in person because <laughs> it's always nice to go and the adopt rescue. a dog and adopt a dog while you're there speaking yeah. of adopting dogs um, you have an influx a large influx of dogs that, that came to the shelter when did this happen so we are calling it a holiday miracle because uh, two days before Christmas uh, we welcomed 63 new dogs to our shelter so the amount of dogs in our care literally <laughs> doubled 
uh, just before Christmas. Um, but all of these dogs, uh, they were rescued by uh, Humane Society International Canada. Yes. Um, and they were rescued from the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. So these were dogs that they literally rescued directly off of transport trucks going into Yulin uh, with dogs that were going to be slaughtered. So these are uh, 63 really lucky, yeah. really special dogs that are now looking for homes. Now, do you know the logistics of how, I mean, how do you rescue dogs in a country like China? Like, what are the legalities and, and like, how does that all even come to be and how do they end up in, in your care? Well, it's been quite a process yeah. to get these dogs here. So HSI, uh, for a few years now, they've had an ongoing campaign, uh, not only to end the Yulin Festival, but to end the dog meat trade. Yeah. Um, so part of that campaign is every year they go to Yulin just before the festival and rescue dogs that would otherwise be slaughtered. Um, so what they then did was they took these dogs to a partner shelter that they have in China where the dogs were cared for and um, got their vaccinations before they could travel. Uh, so this year they actually rescued 172 dogs. Um, so 110 of them came to Canada. And the 63 to dog tails. <laughs> 63 to dog tails, yeah. Um, and the remaining dogs stayed in China. They found homes within China or other shelters took them in. Um, because something that's important uh, to keep in mind is there's a huge uh, group of animal advocates within China yeah. that are opposed to this festival. And actually, um, recent polls say that 70% of people in China with an opinion uh, oppose the dog meat trade. So, um, I think that campaigns and initiatives like this are what we need to eventually yeah. see the end of this. Horrible it's not all festival. just about judgment, and it's and rescue is obviously a big part. But if the if the festival is still popular and still going on, this is going to be like a never-ending cycle. But if people's opinions and attitudes are changing, and I can say I think the I believe the same thing is happening with uh, the shark fin industry. Mm -hmm. That I know the younger generations when they take polls that, that it's decreasing the amount of people who are. Um, want to have shark fin soup at their wedding because that's a very traditional thing that in parts of China, but that seems yeah. to be diminishing as well, which is great news for sharks. Absolutely. And something that a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people think that the Yulin Dog Meat Festival is a tradition that goes back, you know, generations, but it's a relatively new festival. It was started just over 10 years ago as huh. a way to boost dog meat sales. Yep. So this isn't some age-old, yep. time-honored tradition that we're trying to end. It's really a marketing Got scheme you. by the dog meat industry. So, Well, we do have one of our rescues here, Benny, who we is do. adorable. Um, tell us about Benny. So Benny um, is one of the dogs, is one of the 63 dogs that came from Yulin. Um, and all of these dogs, like Benny is kind of the perfect example of what these dogs are like. They're all quite small. Yep. Um, and despite- Blonde color. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're all yeah, blonde. a lot of light colored ones, yeah. Um, and a lot of these dogs, despite what they've been through, are very, you know, well adjusted and are becoming very social, um, which makes us think that a lot of the dogs that came to us were previously family pets that were stolen, um, which that is, is a, a big, big part of the problem, right? Exactly. Yep. yep. So a lot of these dogs arrived and were already potty trained and had, you know, basic obedience. Yep. So we know that they had homes at some point and Benny's one of those. Um, he's, <laughs> he's just the perfect dog. And we laugh because Benny or Betty, our president, our office dog is like the giant version. Yeah. She's a big him. blonde dog. Yeah, so he's her mini me. We've been keeping him in the office with us so that him and Betty can hang out. But he's good with kids. He's good with other dogs. He's healthy. He's, I mean, he's just a great little guy. And I know that no matter how much you fall in love with the dogs um, that come into dog tales, the whole point is we need to get them the forever homes because. That way you can keep doing what you guys do best and that's bring more dogs in and find them 
that the homes that they need, right? Exactly. I mean, there's a little part of us that wants to keep all of these dogs, but we know that they would be so much happier in a home. And every time a dog is adopted, you know, you're saving two dogs because you're opening a room in our shelter oh. for another. Well, if you are um, interested in adopting Benny or meeting Benny, or perhaps even uh, the other 62 dogs have traveled all the way from China uh, to get a second chance, thanks to the Humane Society and, of course, Dog Tales. Please make sure you visit our website for details. But as I always say, it's always best to go visit Dog Tales in person. They're open every Sunday from 11 to 5 to the public. Thanks so much, Claire, for being here. And thank you, everybody, for watching the show. And we will see you next time. Have a good week. Thank you.